For most people, COVID-19 is a brief and mild disease, but some are left struggling with symptoms, including lasting fatigue, persistence pain, and breathlessness for months. The condition known as long COVID is having a de debilitating effect on people's lives, and stories of being left exhausted after a short walk are now common. So far, the focus on saving lives during the pandemic, but there is now a growing recognition that some people are facing long-term consequences of COVID infection. Yet, even basic questions such as why people get long COVID or whether, they, whatever, whether everyone will fully recover are riddled with uncertainty. What is long COVID? There is no med medical definition or list or list of symptoms shared by all patients. Two people with long COVID can have very different experiences. However, the most common feature is crippling fatigue. Other symptoms include breathlessness, a cough that won't go away, joint pain, muscle aches, hearing and eyesight problems, headaches, loss of smell and taste as well, as damage to the heart, lungs, kidney and gut. Mental health problems have been reported including depression, anxiety and struggling to think clearly. It can utterly destroy people's quality of life. My fatigue was like nothing I've ever experienced before, said one sufferer called Jade Gray Christie. Long COVID is not just people taking time to recover from a stay in intensive care. Even people with relatively mild infections can be left with lasting, severe health problems. We've got no doubt long COVID exists, Professor David Strain from the University of Exeter, who is already seeing long COVID patients at his chronic fatigue syndrome clinic. So how many people are getting it? A, a study of 143 people in Rome's biggest hospital, pushed in the Journal of the American Medical Association, followed hosp hospital patients after they were discharged. It showed 87% of one, them had one symptom nearly two months later, and more than half still had fatigue. 55% had fatigue. 50 42% shortness of breath, about 25 joint pain, chest pain, a cough, loss of smell, sicker syndrome, runny nose, red eyes, loss of taste, headache, sweat production, um, loss of appetite, sore throat, vertigo, muscle pain, and diarrhea. So here is that graph now. So yeah, that's the graph. However, some studies focus on the minority of people who end up needing hospital treatment. The COVID symptom tracker app used by around 4 million people in the UK, found 12% of people still had symptoms after 30 days. Its latest unpublished data suggests as many as 1 in 50, 2% of all people infected, have had long COVID symptoms after 90 days. Do you need severe COVID to get long COVID? It appears not. Half of people in a study in Dublin still had fatigue 10 weeks after being infected with coronavirus. A third were physically unable to return to work. Crucially, doctors found no link between the severity of the infection and the fatigue. However, extreme exhaustion is only one symptom of long COVID. Professor Chris Breitling from the University of Leicester and Chief Investigator into the PHOSP COVID project, which is tracking people's recovery, believes people who develop pneumonia may have more problems because of damage to the lungs. How is the virus causing long COVID? There are lots of ideas, but no definitive answer. The virus may have cleared from most of the body, but continues to linger in some small pockets. If there's a long-term diarrhea, then you find a virus in the gut. If there's loss of smell and is in the nerves, that could be what's causing the problem, says Professor Tim Spector from King's College London. The coronavirus can directly infect a wide variety of cells in the body and can trigger an overactive immune response which also causes damage throughout the body. One thought is that the immune system does not return to normal after COVID and this causes ill health. The infection may also alter how people's organs function. This is the most obvious with the lungs if they become scarred. Long-term problems have been seen after infection with SARS and MERS which are both types of coronavirus but COVID may also alter people's metabolism. 
There have been cases of people struggling to control their blood sugar levels after developing diabetes as a result of COVID and SARS, lead changes in the way the body processed fats for at least 12 years. There are early signs of changes to brain structure. These are still being investigated. And COVID-19 also does strange things to the blood including abnormal clotting and damaging the network of tubes that carry blood around the body. Professor Strain told the BBC, The theory I'm working on is a premature ageing of the small blood vessels that deliver oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. But he warned that until we figure out what is causing long COVID, it is difficult to figure out treatments. Is this unusual? Post-viral fatigue or post-viral cough are well documented, do- documented and common. We've all probably... We've probably all had an infection that takes ages to fully recover from. Around 1 in 10 people with glandular fever has fatigue which lasts for months. And there have even been suggestions that flu, particularly after the 1918 pandemic, may be linked to Parkinson's-like symptoms. With COVID, there seems to be more far-reaching symptoms and the number of people seems to be much greater, says Professor Breitling. The emphasis, though, is on the word seems, as until we have a true picture of how many people have been infected, we don't know exactly how these common, common these symptoms are, he says. He told the BBC, the uniqueness of the way the virus attacks the host in different ways is it then alters the way cells behave, seem to be both giving people more severe infections than other viruses and persistent symptoms. Will people fully recover? The number of people with long COVID appears to be falling with time. However, the virus emerged only at the end of 2019 before going global earlier this year, so there is a lack of long-term data. We've asked deliberately to follow people for 25 years. I certainly hope only a very small number will have problems going on beyond a year, but I could be wrong, says Professor Breitling. However, there are concerns that even if people appear to recover now, they could face lifelong risks. People who have chronic fatigue syndrome are more likely to have it again, and the concerns that future infections may cause more flare-ups. If long COVID takes the same pattern, I expect some recovery. But if it takes just another coronavirus infection to react this, then it could be every winter, says Professor Strain. It is possible more problems could emerge in the future. The World Health Organization has warned that widespread inflammation caused by coronavirus could lead to people having heart problems at a much younger age. What should I do if I have long COVID? The NHS has a Your COVID Recovery Plan, which has advice particularly for those who needed hospital treatment. It recommends the three P's in order to conserve energy. Pace yourself so you don't push yourself too hard and make sure you have plenty of rest. Plan your days so that your most tiring activities are spread out across the week. Prioritise. Think about what you need to do and what you can be put off. It advises speaking either to your hospital team or your GP if you are not recovering as quickly as you might expect. Some have raised concerns that there is not enough support for people with long COVID. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it's been very informative. If it has, please leave a like and subscribe and put any questions you may have in the comments. Stay safe, stay well, and goodbye.